So my name is Cameron Wills. I'm a research associate here at Faculty Development at NIU. Um, here's my contact information here. Feel free to contact me um, after the session if you have any specific questions. Um, today we're going to talk about anonymous grading and delegated grading. Uh, starting with anonymous grading. Uh, I know that this session says it's going to go for about an hour and a half, but I highly doubt that we'll, we'll reach that, um, that length today. I actually think we'll be able to keep this under an hour. Um, but if at any point during the session you have a question, please feel free to interrupt me, anything at all. Um, I will have more than enough time, so don't fear that um, we'll be uh, sidetracked or anything like that. So getting started with anonymous grading. So well, why might we want to implement anonymous grading? Uh, well, for one, we can argue the fairness point that this allows us to sort of approach student grading um, with impartiality uh, without a, you know, holding personal biases, you know, explicit, implicit. Um, and it also provides student with an insurance that you're not grading them, um, that you're, you're grading them as just uh, one of many, not as, um, in, as an individual. Um, set an assignment. Anonymous assignment is fairly straightforward. You'll create an assignment as you normally do in Blackboard, and then under grading options, there's a, uh, a box, which we'll see in just a moment, to enable anonymous grading um, under the options. And then, uh, as a special note, students are alerted to the anonymous status of the grading so that when they submit their assignment, they'll know that this assignment is being graded anonymously. Um, there are other parameters that you can set as well, um, including the ability to um, turn off anonymous grading or to um, have it expire after all students turn their work, et cetera, or all, after all work has been graded, pardon me. So here's a screenshot of what that will look like for you um, as you go in and uh, enable anonymous grading in Blackboard. Um, as we see here, there's uh, under A, we have the option for a specific date um, so that after that date, anonymous grading will be turned off and you actually be able to see the students um, who have submitted. This might be useful for identifying what students are missing work um, who haven't turned something in. Uh, the other option is to have the, um, the student grades be de-anonymized after they've been graded. So after the fact, after the, you've already given the students their, their grades, um, you'll be able to see, see who that was um, who earned a particular grade. Um, and so the, uh, the screenshot below kind of gives you a little more information on that. Um, Dan, I think that your uh, microphone's still on. I can hear you. Oh. There. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll disengage you. I apologize, Cameron. Not a problem, Dan. Thank you. So again, uh, you can uh, disable anonymous grading at any time. Um, only anonymously graded attempts will be marked as graded anonymously. So if you were to decide halfway through that you wanted to turn anonymous grading off, the students are alerted to that. Um, they'll be able to see that their assignment was not graded anonymously. So it's a little bit of accountability for, for, um, for instructors there. So uh, some uh, alternative uses, uh, again, turning um, on and off uh, anonymous grading after a student submits an attempt. Uh, this will, depending on how you'd like to approach your assessments, you may just want to have a group of who haven't turned it in be anonymous or after they've turned it in that they've become de-anonymized. Um, you can also turn off um, this after the first submission. So uh, you actually approach anonymous grading the way you would uh, grading normally. Uh, in the grade center, uh, you can uh, select the column for the assignment and then choose the option to grade attempts. You also um, will be able to, th these uh, assignments will show up in the needs grading page under uh, the grade center there as well. Uh, if you've used needs grading before, it 
sort of aggregates all the assignments uh, in Blackboard. Um, you can filter them by a student, by due date, um, particular or particular assignment. Um, and so in this case, you can filter by anonymous assignments as well. And, and this is what that will look like. This is from the Grade Center um, on the left there. So we've selected under the column for the assignment. Uh, and then we can hit Grade Attempts there with A. And on the right, you we can see the Needs Grading page in Blackboard. Um, and then uh, select the assignment, and then you'll automatically be brought into that uh, grading window. Um, the only difference, again, being that you won't see the student's name. It'll just be anonymous student. So proving anonymity, this, again, um, what, what the the assignment will look like in a grade column or for assignment details. It actually has, if you look closely, um, let me highlight that, this uh, grade anonymity icon will show up on the assignment. So that lets you know that this assignment was graded anonymously. You can also see that in the grade details uh, over here. Pretty explicit with the, the grade anonymously. Uh, from the student view, they see the same thing. So uh, that icon exists for them. So that they know that the assignment they submitted has been graded anonymously. Another new feature, which uh, you may or may not have been exposed to so far in Blackboard, um, is if you've left comment uh, feedback for a student, that shows up in a little comment bubble there as well. This is a side note. Uh, a couple special notes on anonymous grading. Uh, any anonymous, anonymously graded assignments are not included in calculators or other grade center actions uh, when that student information is hidden. Uh, another way of putting that would be is as long as that information, that assignment has been uh, anonymized, you wouldn't be able to run a student report on, say, um, you know, their, their overall grade in the class, they're great on assignments, et cetera. Uh, you, you're able to run these while that information is anonymized. So again, these do not display in the Grade Center reports, anything you can run there. Uh, and you also cannot download anonymously graded assignment column data. So you, again, being able to download student data um, to an Excel, et cetera, it doesn't show up when that assignment is, is still marked as anonymous. So this would be a, a, a moment in which you would maybe consider um, after all the everything has been graded, you you de-anonymize that student data so that you can then use it for uh, grade calculations, downloading student data, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so at this point, do we have any questions or comments on uh, anonymous grading? The feature is pretty straightforward. Um, if there's anything that you can think of after the fact, again, you can email me, uh, message me, uh, or what have you. But it's a, this is a nice new feature. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that um, this updated version of Blackboard has included it. It really, I think, goes a long way in terms of uh, accountability for ourselves, reducing bias, and um, sort of fostering that trust between us and students. So. Uh, again, a very, very nice new tool that we have. So the next section I have here, uh, delegated grading. This is a little bit more involved, so the section is going to be a little bit longer. Um, so what is it? Uh, this is assigning specific course users to grade sets of assignment submissions. Um, so if you have, especially in large lecture classes, uh, a, a team of GAs, or excuse me, uh, TAs, that you want to divvy up student assignments to in your lecture class of 150 students, um, this would be a way to do that within Blackboard. So again, why use it? Uh, this promotes reliability. So you're actually having, you can have multiple um, graders assess an assignment and then 
Uh, you get that inner rater reliability. Helps this helps remove bias. Um, again, useful for large classes uh, for and for delegating work to teaching assistants. So another powerful tool for Blackboard that helps us um, foster that student trust and you know um, create that uh, inner rater reliability, which is important for assessment. Uh, so the the roles within Blackboard that have uh, default greater um, permissions are of course the instructor, which is your default uh, role if you're teaching class, uh, any of your teaching assistants that are in, in the Blackboard course, or there's actually a specific role that you can assign to individuals, um, that being of a grader. So that um, these three roles within the Blackboard system have those grading uh, permissions that they can uh, then be delegated um, certain grading sets. So again, a delegated grader helps grade assignments. These assignments are based off of your assignment options. So whenever you create an assignment in Blackboard, the, the grader has to operate within the confines that you have set for that assignment. So any of the options that you set in the beginning, you're not dealing with um, individual graders working off of different uh, assignment options um, and protocols, et cetera. Um, graders also have the ability to assign grades and feedback to um, any submission that a student makes, but the grades and the feedback are provisional. They require your review before they're actually submitted to the student. Again, this is a, the, the feedback is provisional. You can have multiple graders. So for one assignment, you can have three, four um, individuals grade that assignment. Those all show up within the grade center, uh, which we'll see a little bit later on. And then you can make your own assessment um, based off that uh, feedback from, from the other graders. Uh, ultimately, again, the, the decision is up to you what the final grade for that student is. Um, and to reconcile the different grades that the uh, graders have uh, assigned that student, or that uh, particular um, submission of the students. So this is a basic workflow of what, uh, what delegated grading looks like. So the first thing you'll do is enable delegated grading within the assignment. Um, from there, you'll get uh, grading alerts. So the student has submitted a, an assignment that needs to be graded. Um, you or your graders will be able to access those attempts. You and the graders, um, delegated graders, will be able to grade that, those attempts. And then you as the instructor will reconcile, um, will receive reconciliation alerts to let, uh, which lets you know that the student has submitted the assignment, it has been graded by one of your graders, and now you need to reconcile it. And the last step, of course, is to actually reconcile those grades to send, assign that student with their final grade for the assignment, and um, <coughs> pardon me, um, and to provide uh, that feedback to them. So the way that we enable delegated grading is uh, similar to enabling anonymous grading or any options. Uh, you'll go to create the assignment. You'll enable the option for delegated grading, which we'll see in a moment. Um, we'll show all possible graders. These, this will list all the graders within your, that you've designated within your course. Again, other instructors, teaching assistants, or individuals in the course who have been given the status of a grader. Um, you'll select the graders that you want um, for that assignment. And then from there, it, this window sort of looks like this. So again, enabling uh, under grading options, enabling uh, delegated grading. We can list all possible graders. You can limit um, what the, um, the different graders' um, ability is within that system. Um, all submissions uh, versus random set. We'll cover this a, later, a little bit later on. Um, all submissions in, in general, general means that anything that's submitted for that assignment, that person reviews. Um, random set, 
um, with the numeric value of 8 here, let's get that out of the way, but the numeric value of 8 here means that this individual, Monica Gonzalez, will get 8 random submissions that they will review, whereas Kathy Chu up here will review all the submissions for this assignment. And then see over here, this column um, designates whether or not an individual can reconcile the grades. Again, um, review the, the grades of, uh, <coughs> of all the other graders for an assignment and then assigning the student a final grade and that final feedback. So again, the different options for submissions to grade, all submissions being everything that's submitted for the assignment, the random set being um, a random selection of, of assignments that are distributed based off of um, just completely anonymous uh, or random um, attributes. Again, you set that with a numeric value so you can have um, 8, 10, 20, uh, different random sets, which um, again means for that grader that they have 20, we'll say, um, random assignments to grade. You can also select student groups. So if you create student groups within Blackboard, you can assign certain graders to certain student groups. So if you have student group A, B, C, and you want one of your, you want the TA. Um, assigned to each one of those student groups who have that ability. Uh, yes, Katie, uh, go ahead and talk if you like, or send me a message in the chat. Either way, it works for me. Uh, how do you, uh, Katie's asking, how do you set up student groups in Blackboard? Um, I'll write that down as some information I can get to you after this session. We actually do, uh, you know, it's a, another workshop session that we do where we actually go through and create student groups um, and show the and highlight the different features there. Um, but yeah, I'll make sure I get that information to you after um, later this afternoon after this um, after our program here. All right, so picking up where I left off. Um, Again, student groups being able to assign TAs to student groups. Um, so any of the submissions that come through that particular group is assigned to that TA to grade. And then the last year, meaning it's <laughs> the, uh, the, the uh, grader is not for that particular assignment going to be grading any of the uh, submissions. So um, after uh, the student has submitted, notifications for graders appear in their needs grading column um, in their grade center, much like any normal assignment would. Um, their notifications module, their updates page, if they have it set up so they get email or SMS alerts for when assignments are submitted, that will go there as well. Um, <laughs> they should know uh, this, this, um, these alerts go up, come up pop up in, in multiple different locations so that if there's uh, ever a, a moment in time and they need to grade uh, an assignment, they should, they should know about that through these, uh, these for means. <coughs> so up here, just a quick, um, some quick screenshots there of how um, you actually will reconcile the grades. Um, again, only the instructor role can assign those final grades. Uh, and you can access this, the, your needs grading or the grade center. Um, these assignments, if you have it set up so that you want the, the graders to review the assignment first before you do, they won't show up in your needs grading or your grade center until that step is complete. So this is a little bit complicated here. We'll go through each one. Um, the first thing we can do here for reconciling grades from this, this window, um, we have the option to filter by uh, greater progress. So things that have been done, that haven't been done. Um, 
how many graders have touched it. So you can see here, this assignment has been graded by Kathy and James. So you can see the progress there. Um, for Dwight, only Kathy has reviewed it. Uh, Monica has not yet. From this window here under C, you can also see that we can um, add another grader. We can review the assignment in detail. Um, so this would show us student feedback based off our, our from that the grader that uh, has touched that. And then D over here, this is where we determine the student's final grade. Um, you can kind of see here, uh, this is Chris's um, assignment has been graded three times. So the lowest score that he received was an 87. Um, the highest was a 98. And the average between those is a 92.5. So it's up to you as the instructor to decide whether you think that this deserves a higher grade, the lower grade, or an average of the two, or something completely arbitrary. You could give them a 95, a 96. Um, again, you have that final authority on giving that grade. So some of the things that happen after grading. Um, your grade that you have assigned the student replaces that needs reconciliation icon in the grade center. Um, feedback from all graders is available to students on the review uh, submission history page, which is accessible to them. Um, you as the instructor have the option to not show that grader feedback. So if you only want um, the grader feedback for yourself and you want to assign that student their final grade feedback, whether that's for um, aggregating the feedback, you know, into one concise statement across, you know, different graders, or you just want the graders to treat the feedback as a way of communicating with you. Um, there's there's several different options for you there in terms of how you handle feedback um, and what actually gets to students after the after the assignment has been graded. So again, here from the grade center, you can see. Um, we have three different grades here for this assignment from different graders. Um, we access that through viewing the grade details. Um, in this window right here, it's uh, slightly hard to see, but we can see the, the different um, the steps. So starting with Kathy uh, giving the grade of a 98. I know it's a little fuzzy there. Uh, the resolution is a little low. Monica has given a 97 with feedback. James is given a 96 with feedback. And then Kathy has decided on a final grade of 97 um, and has not provided any feedback to that student. But you can kind of see as, that, as the order of events, starting with Kathy, builds its way up to that final reconciliation grade of 97. Um, you have that sort of transactional record um, of the, uh, the delegated grading process. A couple of special notes. Um, users and settings can be carried across over to a new course. This means that if you have delegated grading set up in your course, we'll say for next semester, you can copy the users and settings for all of your assignments that have delegated grading set up over to the next semester. So if you're going to have the same TAs or the same instructors and you want them to be de delegated graders for the next semester for those particular assignments, you can do exactly that. Um, the way you do that is with course copy. If you've ever done course copy before, um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you'll just make sure that you select users, uh, vice versa, or not vice versa, but uh, alternatively, you can copy the course materials, just the materials themselves over to a new course, um, and that will include the enrollments. Um, so while the individuals, the users, aren't in the course yet, when they do become populated in the course, they will automatically be assigned um, a, a, a role as a delegated grader, and they will inherit the grading responsibilities for the assignments that you've imported over as well. Hopefully you're able to follow that. Um, also, if you archive your course and restore it at a later time, um, all these settings are carried over again. So if you archived your course this semester and then you know, a year or two from now, restored it, all of the content, all of the users, all of the uh, settings will will carry over as well. So you'd have to change that later on or alter, 
or um, alter it uh, to meet whatever your course uh, requirements would be for the, that next semester. But um, I guess the moral of the story being that the uh, the settings and the users um, remain constant. Uh, so without enrollments, um, again, if you you copy this um, if you copy the assignments over, but the users don't follow, then um, if they enter that course, they'll automatically be assigned those roles. So a couple tips on delegated grading: uh, make sure that your grader is using the same rubric or criteria to grade assignments with. Um, again, if we're going for that inner rater reliability, we want everyone to be working off the same data, the same um, criteria. Um, make sure that you're reviewing the grader submissions. I would say um, don't rely solely on their judgment uh, as an instructor if you can, if you have the time to at least glance over um, the, the assignment or the, at least the different graders. Um, criteria for which they add or took away points or made certain statements. Um, as an instructor, I think that um, helps your students, you know, um, get the grade that they kind of deserve um, without just sort of passing that off to someone else um, if that works for your course, I suppose. Um, and then you use delegated grading where it makes sense. I wouldn't say that you need to have every assignment um, be a delegated grading assignment. Uh, again, especially with large lecture halls, this makes a lot of sense. Um, any assignment, any major assignment, I would say, where you want to have multiple eyes on, say, like a research paper or a project, um, it makes sense there. I wouldn't say that it makes sense for like a journal assignment um, that students are doing every day. Um, but this is to your discretion. Um, but so a couple points I wanted to make about that. <coughs> and then we are done in record time. Um, <laughs> so do we have any questions, comments, or concerns about delegated grading? Uh, feel free to ask them now. You can either talk or send me a message in the, the chat box there. All right, it's not looking like we have any questions here. So uh, again, my name is Cameron Wills. Feel free to contact me, cwills at niu.edu if you have any questions. Um, you know, as you're going through and setting these things up, if you have any quick questions you want to shoot my way, uh, feel free to ask me. Um, otherwise, good luck with all this. I appreciate everyone showing up today. Uh, enjoy the rest, uh, rest of your afternoon. Thanks again. Thanks, James.